Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Today's video is an interview that I did with tour coach Dana Dahlquist. Dana has worked with a lot of different PGA Tour pros, European Tour pros, Asian Tour pros, LPGA, all kinds, and uh, regular golfers as well. Really sought after coach with a lot of knowledge about the game of golf and also the forces and how to direct the forces in the golf swing in order to level up and get you to become a better player. So I was super excited to do this interview with Dana. And we did, we, we talked for like an hour and went through a lot of really, really fascinating stuff. The bad news now, the bad news is that the main camera, the face on camera that had the audio and was like the main camera was uh, completely corrupted by, there was just, there was some kind of problem with the footage. First time in six years, anything like this has ever happened. So I was really disappointed, but Dana and I have scheduled to do another shoot but I had the, the entire shoot on a second camera, so like my B camera. And it was such a good talk the first time that I was just gonna scrap it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna release these videos from the second camera. So the audio is not perfect. I try to put it like a lot of titles in it to be able to, to tell what Dana's talking about. And I think it's better, it's better than I thought it was going to be at least. But we're gonna do all this again on, on uh, future video so hit the subscribe button but you will see a lot of videos coming out I just want to give you the caveat that it doesn't it's not from the correct angle and it won't sound as good as um, the main videos that come out when when we reshoot it which will be the day after tomorrow but I did want to get them out because it was such good stuff I just don't know if that kind of lightning will strike twice and if we'll be able to catch that magic in a bottle this, a second time so I did want to get these videos out to at least give you some kind of an idea of what Dana's thinking, because it's a lot different than what a lot of coaches are saying, because it's not so much about the position or even the motion, but something that maybe happens before those things. Let's get started. So what does that mean, like, for, there has to be a force behind the motion, and how can that help a golfer become better? Well, I, it can do two things. It can help a golfer get better, it can also help a golfer be not get Okay. So yeah. I'm going to all be completely clear. So we have to understand that, that you, you got to look at this kind of demographically too. So if somebody is obviously very athletically inclined, they're going to be able to move mass more uh, than, than not move mass. So most of the guys that uh, I would say guys like Drew are going to be able to move a ton of mass. they're actually doing is they're moving pressure and they're trying to move the center of mass up into the right as a precursor to movement. So as an example, if you look at Drew, so Drew's a long hitter, right? Yep. So Drew is going to move pressure left, right, and up in order to basically move that center mass up and right to create more force or more exertion for speed. Yeah. The, the problem is, is if you have a high handicapper and they, you tell them to do that, they're probably, they probably don't understand how to do the counterpart to that, which is obviously rotation and turning the pelvis, so they actually move off the ball too far. So Drew knows yeah. he's not going to do that. So let's let's take, take a tiny step back, yeah. and because like when this stuff was first coming out, and they were talking about, no, you're moving your mass, you're not moving your pressure. Just, just, yeah. Define what that means, because like you said, a lot of people hear some of this stuff and they'll they'll get a big sway going yeah. either way. Yeah, we don't want to do that. So, what are the terms? Well, we have talking? so pressure is just essentially just essentially like before the mass. So if I'm going to push off a direction, so just if I if I stand here on my left foot like 60 percent, and I'm going to move it to my right foot, I'm actually going to push pressure first to move the center of mass of my body, which actually did move to the right. Mm -hmm. So most good players do that. Yeah. So I, I would say the majority of the PJ Tour is gonna do that. It does not mean that I'm gonna displace my whole mass of my body off the ball. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of to counter that, if I was moving off that left foot to my right and moving the mass to the right, the reaction's gonna be actually more pressure into that trail side because I moved the mass over there. Once that occurs, then my body's gonna start going rotation to keep it from moving further that way. Yeah. And that's 
probably the, the big mis misconception is guys go, well, I'm going to be centered or I'm going to be moving off the ball. Well, we're not talking about either. We're actually trying to blend them together where you can have a pretty centered golf swing, per se, but still move mass. I mean, everybody looks at Bryce and Deschambeau from like a two-dimensional pitcher, and he's actually yeah. displacing his mass yeah. to create force. Otherwise, he'd never go as fast as he does. It's not possible. So basically, like you're saying, like if a regular player sees what Drew does or Henrik Stenson or other people where they go this way, this way, their system isn't quick enough to, to turn pressure this way into a good motion. It'll just it'll keep going that way. Absolutely. 100%. So what is this antagonistic kind of balance? Well, so you know, you, that or? well, you could call it that, but you really have essentially two legs, right? We're pushing off the left to the right, okay? Yeah. Then I'm building up pressure underneath this, this lead leg, or the trail leg, as I'm winding into it. It's actually pushing me back. This and, and this is where I come into the front, okay? So As a teacher. As a teacher, yeah. So in the old world, we had like this conceptual idea or framework of how the swing should look, okay? And there's certain things that we hold as true, like the low point of the swing. Like being able to make contact is probably the number one, right? If you don't make contact, nothing else matters. Yeah, ball first. Right, yeah. you got to make the sweet spot happen. So when the golf science community came out and they're like, okay, well, and I'm just going to throw a term out here, like we're trying to create a large moment on. Okay. Which yeah. is partly displacing your map. Okay. So just just like a, a quick, what is a moment on? Well, it's so uh, to create a moment on is essentially creating displacement of the center mass and rotating, okay. I'm yeah. able to create a larger force. Yeah. The problem is, it doesn't mean that I'm going to go like this and try to hit a ball because I can't. Because now all of a sudden I move the swing direction 15 to the right and hit 9 up on it. So the golf side of the community, which is valid, yeah. it says that well, we need to, to you know hit the ball first, we're going to try to limit that. Well, now we have conflicting messages. Yeah. Right. We have one group of people that say, hey, I need to hit the ball first because I'm you know, trying to get better, and I have one, I want to hit it further, but therefore I disrupt the pattern, and then I hit it everywhere. Well, the problem is, is you have to blend the two. Yeah. So that becomes very important. Define the two first. So the two things being, if I'm hearing this right, the two things being a, a big force away from the ball, like the ball is 3D that way. Right. So back up and away. Yeah. And still so be able... Be the the still, biggest moment arm I could. Right. But, but then still if I have wanna, the ability to land back into your center. So, so that I can get ball first. Right. Or if I'm driver, so that I can have my path, like basically like this, and not over here. Correct. Okay. Exactly. Hundred yeah. percent. Okay. And that and that's what's kind of fallen to the wayside as a whole because people kind of choose sides. So like, well, I'm this guy, or I'm this side. We're trying to curtail that and cross intersect. Mm -hmm. Do both. Okay. So you can still have your your mask go up and right. I mean, Rory McIlroy, good example, pushes off the left, goes up and right before the club moves like that, that's it, and then winds the system up at yeah. the top, and has a horizontal push back, back to his left ball of his foot, and as he does that, he's back in rotation, boom, and as he gets to this location, he's, both centers are on top of each other. Yeah. You just said like Rory goes left, but I know from doing the stuff with Scott that a lot of people are starting to go left like Very here, early. or really early. So like, let's just, because Rory's a, a well-known, one of the best swings, yeah. where does he start to go back left again? Probably, I would say, somewhere about position three lead arm parallel. Okay, okay. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere. He'll go all the way to here. Sure. But, sure. So a lot of people, I think, when I should, when we talk about this stuff and they try to do it, they wait way too long, especially, too, because I think Scott said, and I think you would, you would know more about this, but if you're going to wait really long, that's the more athletic you have to be. Is that right? Very much so. Okay. Yeah, so very explain much so. that a little bit. What well, that so that's the length of the swing. So if you're looking at like a Tom Watson as an example, there are, now there's an advantage. I mean, we just had Phil playing, right? Yeah. Now, the guys that have longer swings, they typically have more mobility in their system as an athlete is concerned. And they're all athletes, so don't get me wrong. Um, but that longevity factor is an argument because their system is allowing them to rotate more segmentally for a longer turn, mm -hmm. okay? Which doesn't necessarily mean they're going to hit any, any less accurate. Yeah. I mean, Tom Watson's historically one of the best drivers of all ever. Yeah. Um, and, and I think for the average player, they can, they can use that to their advantage. 
I don't think a, the average player should have a shorter swing. They no. should strive for a longer swing. Okay. If you think of it, you're going to have more hip rotation, more trunk rotation, less arm manipulation in their system. So most, at least the guys that I try to teach that are not you know, the elite players, I try to get them to max out hip turn and rib cage rotation. This is what it gets like, be better golf is usually people who've been playing golf for a long time and feel plateaus, so now they're on YouTube looking for tips and then, yeah. and then they subscribe. So when I go to something like the Long Beach Match Play or the Long Beach City Championship, and you see all the different guys warming up, and then you see all the guys that made it to the Sunday, which is just like probably like a quarter of the field, or even less because it's a big thing. Um, the thing that I always notice is of all the guys that just compete, and then all the guys that actually, you know, make that cut, the group that made it to the Sunday is a much shorter looking back to the Oh, yeah, yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, I see all of the shapes of this yeah. on uh, Thursday. Yeah. And then by Sunday, I see all kinds of guys like Nick, who we're talking about, and like others, like Rom, and uh, yeah. guys who are like, you know, some kind of like this. But this is turned at least 90. So you would say, so define, I guess, what you mean by what is a short backswing. And what is a good short sure. backswing and a bad short backswing and a good <laughs> long backswing and a so, bad long backswing. So let's say we have a an ideal situation. Okay, so an yeah. ideal situation is somebody who's able to at least get 90 degrees of shoulder rotation and at least maybe 50 degrees of hip rotation on the backswing. Okay, and I won't yes. get specific on yeah. how the hips are turning because that's mm -hmm. a long conversation. Right. So if I have a high handicap player, the more that I get the knees and the hips and the shoulders to turn, the longer the swing eventually will become, therefore, and they're probably going to have the, the, the ability to hit more out to the right. Oh, okay. So that would be kind of like the ideal. Yeah. Now, I'm not talking about a tour player. Okay, let's just talk about the general. Yeah. Most tour players have to understand how to load the pelvis. That's another conversation yeah, yeah, entirely. Right, right. But if, if I said a high handicap player, let's get everything to rotate as much as you can. Let the heel come up if need be so they get some depth mm -hmm. so they can hit out. Yeah. So you're saying if we see if we see the normal like mid to high handicapper with a long backswing, the club's going back quite a ways. But they're not. Turning. But maybe this has only gone 20 degrees, and this has only gone like 60 or something. That's like yeah. the normal thing you see. So in general, is it an idea for people to, to say like bigger bigger turn, less arm run on? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Hundred percent. And 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 you know the reason why the arm run on is happening is because they didn't turn enough, so they need to recruit something to create speed. They can feel like uh, that's not going to make it go very far. So then, the then they start doing that. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah.